Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise is indeed due to the Almighty, the most merciful, the Lord of the worlds. Was salatu was salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen, nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm ad-deen wa ba'd. We send blessings and salutations upon all those who were sent by the Almighty to us to remove us from darkness and to show us the light. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final of all those messengers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him, his household, all those who have struggled and strove through the years in order to bring the goodness to us such that today, we are here with such great concern for the entire globe in order to see the peaceful coexistence amongst ourselves while we exchange ideas and we learn from each other. My brothers and sisters, we also ask the Almighty to bless every one of us and all those inhabitants of the earth. We ask the Almighty to have mercy on the convention here in Dubai in this year, 2019, the year of tolerance. My brothers and sisters, if you were to look at the meaning of the term tolerance, you will find variations, various dictionaries and various people have explained it in so many different ways. But what's important to know is if we go back right to the beginning of the creation of man, we will be able to understand through the importance of tolerance, its meaning. Let me take you back to the origin as mentioned in the scriptures. In Surah Al Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhannasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqakum O people, Allah is addressing all the people reminding them of something absolutely important He says, O people, I have created you I have created you from a single male and female. I want you to stop there for a moment before we even proceed further. Do you see those seated next to you? Do you see those whom you interact with on a daily basis? Do you ever think within your mind, those whom you differ with, those who are of a different race, different nationality, different part of the world, different culture, those who like you, those who don't like you, those who agree with you, don't, those who don't agree with you, do you realize that you actually have one common father? Do you realize? I promise, as much as we think we are religious or we are intelligent, we always need reminders. When you look at someone you totally disagree with, pause for a moment, tell yourself, my father and this person's father is actually the same man. My mother and this person's mother is actually the same woman. And what I mean by this is going back to the origin, the root. Imagine our great, 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 and so on, grandfather is one man. His name was Adam. And our great, 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 great grandmother, one woman, her name was Hawa or Eve, may peace be upon them. When we forget this, we actually become so intolerant of each other. So if we realize that we're all from one source, there is something important that we will come to learn. We will come to learn that every one of us has the equal right to exist on earth. The Almighty created us. He wanted us here. We will differ as to what the purpose of our existence on earth is. Among the children of Adam, there was difference as well. We as Muslims believe, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ we believe that the Almighty has created us in order to worship Him, to obey His instruction, to stay away from His prohibitions. That's what we believe. But do we realize 
that there are others who are entitled to be on the earth who actually could differ with that and they would still have the right to exist on earth just like we do. The unfortunate thing is, yes, we are passionate about what we believe, but we cannot be crossing a limit where we become intolerant of those who perhaps think otherwise. They think differently from us. They are our brothers and sisters. This is why the best meaning that I've seen of tolerance is the willingness or the ability to peacefully coexist with those who differ with you, those who differ completely. Are you willing to coexist? Are you willing to respect their right to have a different opinion from yours without wanting to punch them in the face because of the opinion they hold, without wanting to hurt them or without swearing or insulting them, without usurping any of their rights because they hold a different opinion. So let's go back. The children of Adam, may peace be upon him, Allah Almighty makes mention of the story of some of them, two of them being Abel and Cain. And this is mentioned even in the other testaments, in the other scriptures, scriptures of other faiths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there was jealousy between the two of them for a reason. And the one became intolerant of the virtue that the Almighty bestowed upon the other. If you take a look at Cain or Qabil, he became intolerant he, through jealousy of the virtue that was bestowed upon Habil, also known as Abel. And what did he say to him? He says, La I'm going to kill you. Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect us. The Almighty's mentioned this in scripture, not for nothing, for us to learn a lesson that Allah Almighty will grant virtue to some over the others. Allah will give a different understanding to every individual. I was created by the same Almighty that created you. And you and I were created by the same maker who created those who don't like us or those whom we might not agree with at all. Does that mean that they don't have a right to disagree? Yes, we believe we are right. Guess what? They believe they are right too. So what should we do? We should continue to propagate because propagation is something that is our duty, just like they would believe that they should also propagate because it is their duty. And this is where the discussion comes up. And this is where we are supposed to apply the same intellect given by the Almighty, knowing that every human being's level of understanding is different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if your Lord wished, he would have guided every single person on earth. Every one of them would be guided. So you cannot impose guidance that you believe is the guidance on anyone. You cannot impose it on anyone, subhanAllah. You will continue to discuss. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the messenger, peace be upon him. <laughs> the duty of the messenger is none other than conveying the message. <laughs> Indeed, you, your duty is to convey the message. Our duty is to take account. If Allah wanted, he could have destroyed those whom we differed with, but he didn't. Why should we do that? Subhanallah. Allah created them just like he created us. So if we go back to what happened between the children of Adam alayhi salam, one of them said to the other, I'm going to kill you because he became intolerant and that caused disaster. The disaster was that he did commit that murder. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forbid, Allah protect all of us. Amen. And so the Almighty makes mention of several factors regarding that story. One of them is where Abel told his brother, you know what? 
if you're going to come and harm me, I'm not going to harm you. You're my brother. Don't do this. Don't do this. You know, the virtue that the Almighty has bestowed upon me is something that he gave me. Why are you becoming jealous of what the Almighty gave me? Today we have jealousy over small matters. If it is unchecked and if it is let loose, it will grow into something so big that it will result in not only death, but possibly mass death and possibly destruction. Why? Out of something small. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be tolerant of each other. And this is why to be happy at the happiness of another is part of faith. To be sad at the loss of another is part of faith. This is all what the Almighty has taught us. So Allah says, فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ In another verse, just a little bit later, Allah says, مِنَ khasirin." Allah says, this man became from among those who regretted. Well, some people don't even regret their bad deeds. So to regret your bad deed is a good sign. And Allah says, he became from among the losers because he killed his brother. Look at where that intolerance got to. So that was a story, the first story that we can actually learn from. The effect of intolerance. Going back to its definition, the willingness and the ability to peacefully coexist. And that would mean with those whom you differ with. When I am totally different from you, do I think for a moment? And this is a difficulty, especially when we become religious, when we become people who are, you know, very close to scripture in any religion and sometimes even ideologically when we believe we are very intelligent and we have the right way we tend to forget that others could be more intelligent or equally intelligent and their intellect might lead them to something else what do i do if i am weak and i'm a coward i might want to harm them and attack them but if i am strong and if I display that level of intellect, I will engage them in discussion to prove certain factors. And who knows, they might prove to me that they are right and I am wrong. How many of us, we thought we were so correct. There came a time when someone engaged us and they explained to us and they proved to us with evidence and we had to surrender to say, you know what? I was wrong, you are right. Never feel or never allow yourself to become so proud and arrogant that you deny the truth. This is why when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was explaining to his companions, He who has an atom's weight worth of pride in his heart does not qualify to enter paradise. The companions asked, well, we love our clothing and our conveyance and our homes etc etc the prophet peace be upon him said that is not what is being referred to rather what was being referred to is baturul haqqi wa ghamtun nas when you reject the truth and you despise people it shows that you have smacks of arrogance and pride and those who have that type of pride will not have a space in paradise according to the hadith so Let's not despise people because when we start using words that are hurtful and hateful, what does it do? It shows that we have not learned the tolerance. No matter how much you differ with someone, no matter how absurd their opinions are, be respectful and you shall learn. In fact, if you are respectful, you will teach others and people will see the goodness in you. You have actually respected yourself. You have actually lifted yourself. You have served humanity at large and you have taught humankind what it is like to differ with respect. The difficulty is when we see people who do something that is totally absurd according to us, we become vulgar. We use bad words, swear words, hurtful words, hateful words. Yes, you will differ. We have differences even in our own families. If you are a true Muslim or a true believer, or if you are concerned about humanity at large and the peace on earth, you will be respectful in the way you deal with that difference. May the Almighty grant us ease.
This matter is absolutely important. It is so important because on the globe, at the moment, we are in desperate need of the voice of reason. We are in desperate need of a balanced voice that does not take away from us our religion, nor does it take away from anyone else their right to believe in whatever they feel is correct, but rather it gives us that mutual respect which results in the peaceful coexistence that we are talking about today. My brothers and sisters, many people think tolerance means I'm going to give up my faith, I'll tolerate, so I don't have to do what Allah has said, I don't have to dress in a specific way, I don't have to pray in a specific way, I don't have to do X, Y, and Z that the Almighty has instructed. That is a misconception completely. Tolerance has nothing to do with giving up your opinion. It has more to do with respecting the same right that others have of not giving up their opinions. Amazing. Amazing. In the same way I feel my opinion is sacred, I feel intelligent, I feel, wow, I'm clever. Everyone else feels the same. As much as I am passionate about Islam, there are people who are passionate about Christianity. There are people who are passionate about Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever other ism, even atheism. I can believe that I am correct and I do. I do believe that I am absolutely correct, but guess what? Don't they have a right to believe as human beings in whatever they consider to be the most correct? Subhanallah. When I discussed this some time back with a group of youngsters who were quite religious, they told me, no, they don't have the right. I said, what are you talking about? They don't have the right. You mean that the Almighty only asked you to survive? That's it. And you're the only one who is entitled to be living and everyone else should be dead. Is that what it is? That is absolute, absolutely unacceptable. Everyone has the right to live. Everyone has the right to believe whatever they feel is correct. That's why I am here. Because someone has given me the right to believe that whatever I feel firmly is correct is correct. Subhanallah. If that was not the case, I wouldn't even be here today. It's a very, very important point. I am passionate about Islam. I would desperately like to see people understand the goodness of Islam, see the light within Islam, perhaps come towards the fold of Islam. Maybe if Allah guides them, even enter the fold of Islam. But I need to know that that is a struggle that will continue and it, it needs to be done in a very respectful way. There will be people who agree with me. There will be people who disagree with me. There will be people who couldn't be bothered at all. And there will be people who will Fight me as a result. How do I react? How do I retaliate? I need to make sure that I can peacefully coexist with all these differences of opinion. I remember when I became part of an interfaith committee at one stage, people told me that you are losing your faith. And I said, absolutely not. You don't even know what we're discussing. We want to understand each other. We want to be able to discuss what we believe so that we can respect each other and, and so that we can actually perhaps learn from each other. And guess what? Many people who did not know much about Islam learned that it is actually a religion that has heavenly teachings, that has superb teachings filled with not only excellence in the worship of the Almighty, but even in our interaction with humankind and the other creatures of the Almighty. They did not have that opportunity before. So when we participate in interfaith committees and dialogues and conferences, never is it to give up your faith, as some people might presume, but rather it is to be able to coexist peacefully and exchange notes to understand each other without giving up a single droplet of what I believe. Subhanallah. It's amazing. It doesn't mean that, you know, because I interacted with people of other faiths that I have suddenly given up my own faith. No. Rather, I have shown them how beautiful the faith is. And they would show me as well, perhaps, what they may have that I may not have known before. There are so many teachings of these heavenly faiths that are so common, yet we don't know. It is ignorance, my brothers and sisters, that results in hate, that would actually then result in fighting 
fighting and possibly even killing. May the Almighty protect us from ignorance. So let's educate ourselves. Let's become people who are willing to peacefully coexist. That is the entire meaning of tolerance. I draw your attention to something else. Every one of us at some stage, and I've said this so many times, whether it was within ourselves, for those who have reverted to Islam, whether it was our parents or grandparents or great-grandparents or somewhere up that ladder, they were not Muslims. They were not Muslims. Someone somewhere somehow happened to be speaking to them or dealing with them or associating with them or interacting with them in such a beautiful way that they decided they want to be Muslim. That's why we're Muslim, subhanallah. Had they been taught not to interact, not to associate, not to deal with, to fight, to be at war with, had they been taught that you're the only people who have the right to exist on earth, if that was the case, our forefathers would have been wiped out from the earth. So it's common logic. We need to appreciate that someone somewhere, somehow, has actually had that concern to be able to interact in such a positive way that we are where we are today. Take a look at the Jawa. Take a look at Indonesia and that part of the world where it is said that, and they are the most populous Muslim nations on the globe. It is said that Islam has spread there not even through the, the active propagation of Islam, but rather through businessmen and traders and people who dealt with them when they were honest, when they dealt with them in such a beautiful way. There was a little flicker of a candle within the heart that became brighter and brighter, such that they wanted to know more about what is making you such good people. And then they entered the fold of Islam. Imagine. So that's part of the beauty of this tolerant religion of Islam. I'd like to think that re religion has partly been hijacked by those who don't understand scriptures, those who have misinterpreted it intentionally to suit their own agendas of creating disaster on the globe in the name of the most merciful. I always say those who kill in the name of religion have perhaps never considered the fact that the Almighty calls himself the most merciful, the most beneficent. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Every time we start, we say in the name of Allah, the most forgiving, the most merciful. Or the most merciful, the most merciful. One in a specialized way and one in a very, very broad way. The owner of mercy, the one who calls himself the the most merciful, do you really think that he would ask you to wipe people out, out of that mercy? Subhanallah, subhanallah. You are killing in the name of the, the giver of the life. If he wanted, he could have taken that life away himself. And secondly, you are killing in the name of the most merciful. Where is the mercy? Where is the understanding of the beautiful faith? Subhanallah. So we go back to the issue of tolerance, to willingly ex coexist with those whom you differ with, subhanallah. You ready? You ready? Let's go back to the first verse that I recited here. And I said, I'm going to come back to it. Remember? Oh, people, we have created you from a single male and female. And thereafter, we have made you spread as different peoples and tribes. Why? Why is there black and white and yellow and brown? Why are there different races, ethnicities, different sizes, different understandings? Allah says, One word, in order that you can recognize each other. You are different, not so that you can discriminate against each other. That's not the reason. Allah didn't say so that one can consider himself higher or bigger than the other no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in order that you recognize one another they say who is this man he is an Indian who is this man he is this he is that he is an African or he comes from this place or that place it does not mean that the Almighty wants you to discriminate not at all rather you recognize each other each person each person 
comes in front of the Almighty on the day of judgment on his own. Remember, if you think a certain nationality is bad, a certain race is bad, a certain ethnicity is bad, you are so wrong because every race and every nationality and every ethnicity has in it good and bad. So you would be totally uneducated if you thought that a nationality in its entirety is bad just because of the acts of a few. We as Muslims are trying to combat this type of ideology where people on the globe who have become Islamophobic think that because of the acts of a small percentage of people who, who are Muslim or who claim connection to the faith because of their actions, we're all suddenly termed as guilty. We're all termed as those who have absolutely no right to exist. Those who are intolerant, terrorists, whatever else. All these words are used against us. And why are these words used against us? Because of a few, a small number who have actually perpetrated heinous crimes in the name of this beautiful faith that we are speaking about. The faith of mercy, the faith of tolerance and goodness. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So the Almighty addresses mankind at large, reminding us of the fact that you come from a common forefather. You're all brothers and sisters. In the same way, I believe I have a right to exist on earth. I promise you, anyone who was born on earth has the equal right. Same right. You were born on earth. They were born on earth. You have the same right. You have a right to your opinion. You have a right to your, what you believe is correct. You can believe what you think. And you know what? Keep on educating yourself. I know one might say, well, as a Muslim, I believe that I'm 100% correct. Yes, I do. I actually do as well. But you know what? Do you realize that people of other faiths and even those who don't have a faith, they too would perhaps believe or they have the right to believe that they are 100% correct. And I have the right to believe that perhaps they are wrong and they have the right to believe that perhaps I am wrong. These are all rights. This is what makes humankind. Why should we think because this person doesn't think like me, I must eradicate them. I must chop them off. I must hate them. I must perhaps not live with them, not talk to them. No. Learn to greet people. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us about greeting, not because of any reason besides its great importance and the benefit of it. I recall myself in my travels, many times people look at me and perhaps things go through their minds. The moment you break into a smile and you greet them, I swear 99% of the time it changes the attitude completely. Wow, they realize, okay, this is a human being. Okay, oh, he smiled. He actually greeted, subhanallah, subhanallah, wow. And then they will come and say, oh, I like your dress. Wow, thank you. I just needed you to talk to me, that's all. I'm also a human. We all like it, subhanallah. We like to be spoken to. If someone praises you, you're walking and you're tired and someone says, wow, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry. I like the way you're dressed. What will happen? No matter how upset you are, you're going to look, smile and say, thank you, thank you. You know, that's how the world's become. The problem with us we are sad, we show that sadness on our faces, so we make everyone else sad. No. Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us the opposite. You are supposed to smile even if there is sadness in your heart. Try and break to a smile. Imagine that tabassum that is spoken about in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Why is it considered a sadaqah? Why is it considered a charity? To be able to peacefully coexist with the others, not just coexistence, but help them, benefit them, without them realizing that you've benefited them. When you have an expression on your face that is constantly pleasant, and I want to pause for a moment to, to actually uh, let you in on something very, very interesting. My brothers, my sisters, promise yourself, and your life will change. Promise yourself what? Promise yourself to constantly try and have a good expression on your face. I swear, my brothers and sisters, you will not regret. Your life will change. Promise yourself to try and have a good expression on your face. You know, go and think what I've just said. 
Many of us, we actually are very, very sad looking throughout the day, every day. Promise yourself to try, try to have a slight smile plastered on your face as though it's part of your makeup, subhanallah, and see what happens. You will change not only your life, but I promise you, you will change the globe. Everyone around you will have a totally different perception. They will want to know what is the driving force behind you being so happy all the time. If you could tell them, I'm actually sadder than you, but I'm just smiling. Subhanallah. That smile is contagious. Other people will smile. We will all smile. We break the ice between us and others. If I believe I'm on the right path, Whenever am I going to get the opportunity to discuss that with those who differ with me? When? And there are so many who believe they may be on the right path and they probably are not. We, myself included, need correction because that is the condition of humankind. None of us is perfect. If I'm making a mistake and I'm not prepared to talk to anyone and I'm not prepared to interact or to listen to any other opinion, when am I going to realize my mistake? I won't. I need to listen. I need to think. I need to be able to open my heart and I need to know for me, as a Muslim, my guidance comes from revelation. Yes, if whatever is being said, something is proven that I have done or said something wrong, I need to act, acknowledge that I'm wrong. And that's what makes me even more tolerant. I was tolerant of somebody's opinion and I got to learn that, guess what? Mine was wrong and theirs was right. I promise you it has happened to me where I firmly believed that something was absolutely right. And later on, someone came to me and they explained to me, look, you made a mistake. This is what you said and this is what you did, etc. And subhanallah, I thank the Almighty for giving me the opportunity to listen to it, to be able to acknowledge, to be able to understand. My brothers and sisters, I want to go back to a verse that I recited earlier where the Almighty says to the Muslims and to all of us, Obviously, it's a verse in the Quran, so the Muslims would believe it. Others may not believe it. What do we believe? We believe we were created in order to worship the Almighty. In order to fulfill His instruction and stay away from His prohibition, that will result in our peace and comfort in this world and the success in the next. That's what I believe. That's what we all believe. So, the Almighty told me, told you, I've sent you on earth in order to worship me. He didn't say, I sent you on earth to kill those whom you differ with. I sent you on earth to fight those whom you disagree with. I sent you on earth to spit on others. I sent you on earth to destroy. No, I sent you on earth to build. I sent you on earth to worship. I sent you on earth to try to spread the goodness. If Allah wanted, there would have been nobody misguided. I read that verse for you. But because he wanted to test us, as to how patient we are with others. He created differences. Are you prepared to be different? Are you prepared to listen to someone and to discuss in a dignified manner, in a respectful manner? I've known within Muslims, within Muslims of intolerance, within a sect itself of intolerance, just because someone has a different opinion. How? I'm not saying give up your opinion, but I am saying be tolerant of others. They have a right to exist. Remember that. They have a right to exist. It's up to you. Subhanallah, if you look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the masjids, the places of worship, the churches, the synagogues, etc. And Allah says, وَلَوْ لَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَهُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِعُ وَبِيَعُ وَصَلَوَاتُ وَمَسَاجِدُ وَمَسَاجِدُ يُذْكَرُ فِي هَسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا Surah Al-Hajj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about how had it not been that people had to check one another and, you know, I cannot just attack you because I know that I'm responsible. Someone else will probably attack me and it's a vicious cycle. So Allah says, had it not been for that system of the Almighty, places of worship would have been destroyed by mankind themselves. 
My brothers and sisters, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has told us that even at the time of war, make sure you know that the places of worship are safe havens. Today, people go into a place of worship and commit murder. A'udhu Billah. People go into a place of worship and commit murder. Yes, we know what has just happened in New Zealand. But I am talking about even beyond that as Muslims, sometimes people think because these people are Christian, they have no right to worship. So they end up going into the church and wanting to eliminate the people who believe in a different faith, not realizing the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself said, whoever enters that place of worship is actually safe. You have no right to harm them even at a time of war. How's that? Subhanallah. Those who enter the monastery are safe. Those who enter the church are safe. Those who enter the synagogue are safe. This is at a time of war. And yet there are people who believe that this beautiful religion of tolerance has, astaghfirullah, teachings that are intolerant. No, not at all. Those are misunderstandings and misinterpretations. May the Almighty grant us goodness and ease. So my brothers and sisters, it's very, very important for us to continue discussing this topic. We need to clarify the doubts that we have from those of knowledge. We have three full days, inshallah, where we will be discussing various aspects of tolerance. And the idea, like I say, is not to water down your faith. That is a mistake that people think. I recall people who told me that, you know, whenever you want to engage someone and you're talking to them so nicely, come on, it, you are showing that Islam is weak. That's not true. Actually, the strength of Islam is in this beautiful characteristic that we have, that of tolerance, that of goodness, that of reaching out to people. So my brothers and sisters, I pray that the Almighty benefit us and I pray that the Almighty grant us a good understanding and I would not like misunderstanding because like I said, if you sit and ponder over a, for, for a moment where you came from and where the person you totally disagree with came from, you will realize you are one family. And you know what? If you were traveling on an aircraft or in a ship or perhaps if you were moving in any place and suddenly there was a disaster that struck, be it a natural disaster or any other type of a disaster, what would happen? People would strive to save one another. They would strive. If I fell right now here, may Allah forbid, without knowing me, people will run to my assistance, male and female. If an accident happened on a road that is very, very, uh, you know, that has little traffic, a deserted road somewhere, and an accident happened. And later on, a car came past of people who really differed from you. They were a different race, a different religion, a different inclination, different ideas, different everything. But I promise you that humanity sets in. They will stop and help you. They won't ask you, sorry, tell me, uh, what religion are you? Oh, you, this religion, you can die. Goodbye. They won't say that. Islam teaches you never to say that. It's humanity that clocks in. nasi, anfa'uhum nasi. The most beneficial of people, the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad says, peace be upon him, the, the best of people is the one who benefits most the rest of the people. How do I benefit the rest of the people? Subhanallah. The best of you are those who have best character. So now comes a man and he says, you know what? Well, I'm going to go around slapping people because they need to be tolerant of me. I believe that I must slap people. So I'm going to go and I'm going to slap that man and that man and that man and that woman and that woman and I'll slap them as I'm walking out. And if they want to do anything to me, I'm going to say, you're supposed to be tolerant. Don't you know? You're tolerant. You're supposed to be tolerant. Can I tell you? That proves to us that there is a line. When we speak of freedom, when we speak of tolerance, 
We are not speaking of the usurping of rights of another. You steal someone's property, you cannot come and say, sorry, at the police station, they're supposed to be tolerant. Come on, I stole. That was just my weakness. You know, recently, I read an article where a thief actually said that since I was born, it, it was in my genes to steal. So don't blame me. Wallahi, I read this a few days ago. A thief who was caught, he said, since I was born, it was in my genes to steal. So he must have stolen a pair of jeans as well. He says, it was in my genes to steal, so I stole. Why are you punishing me? Hang on, hang on. You cannot use the term tolerance to perpetrate crime and to claim that you're not going to be dealt with. That's not tolerance. So as much as you are free, you are not free to damage someone, to hurt someone, to take the rights of someone else. There is a line. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. The same applies to insult. While we are free to talk, we are free to say things, we are free to express ourselves, we must be respectful. Because the moment we begin to say things that, that are hurtful, hateful, insulting, we will be taken to task. And we have to be taken to task. Someone has to stop you. Because if they don't, it's going to create chaos and disaster across the globe. Hence, we check each other. Number one, we remind each other. Listen, my brother, please don't do this. This is wrong. This is not allowed. You cannot come in and steal or damage. You know, I have the right to drive on the road. Once I have a license and a car and everything is registered and it's okay, I'm good to go. I have a license to drive on the road, but I don't have a license to bump into someone else. If I bump into someone else, I'm going to pay. I have to pay. I cannot say, ah, sorry, sorry, this is the year of tolerance, so you've got to tolerate my bashing. That's foolish. I have a license to drive, but I don't have a license to break the law in terms of speed limit, in terms of seat belt, in terms of so many other things. If I've broken the law, I will pay. So this goes to clarify the issue of injustice, oppression, and the violation of the rights of others. That is not included in the term tolerance, where we cannot use tolerance in order to perpetrate these crimes. May the Almighty grant us goodness. The last part of what I'd like to say this evening is connected to the issue of hatred. Yes, I will hate things. Sometimes I hate certain behavior. We all hate criminals, or should I say crime? Let me word it again. We all hate the crime. But there is a noble level that Muslims are taught and trained. As much as we hate a crime, we need to have hope that perhaps the criminal will regret, he will feel the sense of remorse and change his life. Yes, the punishment of this world will be meted out. Say, for example, a man commits murder. We hate murder, we don't accept it, we won't allow it, we'll try our best to protect everyone from it. But if someone has committed murder, while the law is dealing with them, a true heart that is filled with compassion should actually be praying within it that the person feels the remorse, that the person perhaps turns to the Almighty, that the person regrets, seeks forgiveness, that is a separate matter from the justice of the world. I remember there was a perpetration of a crime not too long ago in New Zealand. And I remember putting out a little note saying, you know what? We should be praying for this person to see the light. And people thought I'm saying, forgive him. Forgive him completely. I have no right to tell people to forgive someone when the cr crime has been committed against them. But I do have a right to say, pray for the man. If he realizes and he regrets and he shows remorse, surely one part of his dealing has been sorted out. That with the Almighty. Perhaps there is hope for his hereafter. What will happen on earth? He will face justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So we will inshallah be going into greater detail of this, uh, of what I've said this evening and many other aspects of the issue of tolerance in the next three days. I pray that the Almighty grant acceptance, and I pray that we've benefited from what I've said. In a nutshell, we need to learn that the right we have 
to hold an opinion, the right we have to be firmly upon our faith. We need to understand others have a similar right. We will differ. We will discuss, we will exchange notes, we will propagate, we will continue praying for, we will hope, and where we are wrong, we will also change ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a broad understanding.